So I cannot show you all, uh, but uh, there is a little chapter on Shani. Um, so in the chapter on Shani, they define what Shani is. So uh, who wants to read this? Miguel, can you read this? Uh, sure. Uh, anciently, the long dress had definite measurements. So as to satisfy the requirements of the compass and square, the line, the balance, and the steel yard. It was not made so short as to show any of the skin, nor so long as to touch the ground. The outside pieces of the skirt joined and were hooked together at the side. The width of the seam at the waist was half, at the, half that at the bottom of the skirt. The sleeve was joined to the body of the dress at the armpit, so as to allow the freest movement of the elbow joint. The length of the lower part admitted of the cuffs being turned back to the elbow. The sash was put on where there was there were no bones, so as not to interfere with the action of the thighs below or of the ribs above. Mm, thank you. So everybody, I mean, I know you are talented designer students. So based on this description, if a client tell you that, well, these are descriptions of the garment that I want, can you create a garment out of this? I want you to think for a couple of minutes. So after reading this, uh, can you you know, like imagine the Shani that we've seen in uh, artworks and today fairly match the description. Any volunteer? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Is this Nancy? No, this is Emma. Oh, Emma. Oh, yeah. So Emma, can you explain a little bit more? Um, <clears throat> so talking about the sleeve and the sash mm -hmm. and also the the they call it like the line of the dress, the balance is compass and square. That makes sense with what we've seen of like what the pattern mm. or a shiny would look like. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with, uh, you know, Emma. So, uh, you know, to me, like, you know, the width of the seam at the waist was a half that of the bottom. So that's why they, you know, depicted the woman, you know, at the funerary banner, she has a sort of slender body, right? But then the skirt is really well flared, right? That's what they are saying, right? Like the bottom is a little bit wider than the than the waist area. And the where does the waist go? It's not on the chest, right? So here they say it's, a, you know, no bones. So uh, thighs below or the ribs above. So it's between thighs and ribs. So when there is no bones, there is only waste, right? So uh, that's how we can uh, imagine. Uh, and there are more like ideas. So here, um, uh, so Emma, you can read this passage. Sure. Um, in the making of the garment, 12 strips of the cloth were used to correspond to the 12 months. The sleeve was made round as if fashioned by a disc. The opening at the neck was square, as if made by means of that instrument so named. The cord-like seam at the back descended to the ankles, as if it had been a straight line. The edge at the bottom was like the steel yard of a balance made perfectly even. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I think they liked that the end of it, like a straight, and, and they keep saying steel yard. This is because, uh, Zhou Dynasty, the Chinese government came up with a uh, unit of measurement. That's why they call it steel yard. Uh, and you know the unit of the measurement, like what is the one yard, right? It may vary from region to region. So the government created a metal yard, which is sort of a set in stone. It doesn't change, right? So how do you know the one yard? Because the government created this uh, unified, regulated yard stick. You know that one yard in Hebei province is the same as one yard in, uh, let's say, Jiangsu province. Uh, so that's the steel yard that they're talking about. So it's a straight, it's a government made. Uh, and 
Chinese government overall, it has you know, really amazing uh, level of statecraft. So here, again, the symbolism, 12 strips. Why 12 strips? Because of the 12 month. Um, so um, you actually use quite a lot of fabric. Uh, and when you imagine the, the strip of the yard is like this, like a, the width is almost your body width because that's the, that's the uh, size of the loom like a homespun loom, right? It's about your body width. If you are working in a commercial production, it can be wider, or in China, sometimes they can make a really wide fabric, like, you know, wide like this. They have special uh, looms. Uh, but at home, homespun is something like your body part width. We don't know how long this measurement is, but uh, you have this in 12 strips, right? And then, you are going to sew them together. So that's why that bias, you know, like a style, diagonal, like a lines are coming up. Uh, so it's stretchable. And then this is important, right? Like a, I, I, we were talking about, we don't know the exact shape of the uh, sleeves, but it, they say like a disc. So that's why, uh, what is it? Like, a, you know, to, to round. So that's why, Painting shows this, you know, always kind of round uh, sleeve. 